we could sit in the middle of our sorrow and sip the coming joy. Good morning, everyone. Great to be with you today. Uh, my name is Craig, one of the pastors here. It's a privilege to bring God's word to you today. And our focus verse for this morning is Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And Oilers fans, today's probably a better day to do that, isn't it? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Come on. <laughs> well, we want to rejoice. Good things happen. And I was thinking about this passage and thinking about the book of Philippians. And this is the last message in that series. And this thought came to me that Paul, the writer, he was in prison, but he was free. In prison, yet free. You see, the harsh worlds around him couldn't stop the joy. The pain of the beatings and the persecution and the hunger that he went through wouldn't stop the joy. The government and leaders and the trials, all that he went through, didn't stop the joy. This jailbird, Apostle Paul, pours out exuberant, deep, and genuine joy. It flows from his heart. It comes from his life and his pen as he writes these words. It spills out onto the Philippian people, and they gladly partner with him with genuine joy, even though it's hard, and even though it takes sacrifice. They were deeply touched by this joy, a genuine joy that's not actually primarily from Paul's heart. Friends, this joy that he experienced that was genuine is truly and ultimately from the heart of God Almighty himself. You see, situations, circumstances, relationships, people, problems, all kinds of things can seek to keep us in prison. Yet, we can be free with genuine joy, just like Paul today. And that's what this amazing letter is about. And it's hard to believe that today's the last message in that series uh, our team has been praying and seeking uh, God together for you. Every year around this time, we, we want to hear from Jesus and pray and seek his face on behalf of you and, and, our, and all of us together. God Almighty, what do you want to say to us as a people? We want to hear from your heart, God, for us together. Lord, what book of your Bible? You see, here at Heartland, we love to walk through books of the Bible we want to go through line by line and ask God, what is he saying to our Heartland family? And he led us to Philippians uh, to pour over it, to seek out what God has to say to us, to speak to us, to be challenged, to be convicted, and to be changed by God Almighty. You see, the Bible is God's word, and he, we purposefully here at Heartland put ourselves under its authority to be shaped by its thoughts to put God at the center, to say your words, your heart, God, are primary, and we willingly submit ourselves to God the Father, the Lordship of Jesus Christ, and the power and the influence of the Holy Spirit. It's been a great year-ish since September going through this book, and we really believe that it's the best way to live life under the authority of God's leadership and his word with his people. Now, there's this prominent theme. We've heard about it in some stories. We've been praising God. You see it behind me here, this prominent theme of joy. And Paul wrote these words down. The Philippians received and then lived these words. And then last week, Pastor Wade talked to us about Timothy and Epaphroditus and how they walked out these kinds of words. Well, friends, we want to be like these people here in 2024. Listen to our theme verse for today again, Philippians 4, verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Think about that for a moment. It's not conditional. It feels better when your hockey team wins 8 to 1. <laughs> but it's not conditional, right? <laughs> always. It's like a double shot of espresso, double stuff like the Oreos. Are you an original or a golden Oreo person? 
Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I'm a golden person. Anyways, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But there's this book of joy that he's talking about joy all over the place. And then in this phrase, he says, rejoice in the Lord always. Okay, so that's a lot. And he says, rejoice. I like that. And there's this joy expression. That's what rejoicing is, and it's expre- an expression. But I have to admit, I, I struggle with it at the same time. I feel the tension of these words. I want it, but it feels and seems unattainable. Now, we've been walking through this book, and, and I hope that it's helped you to grasp joy in every circumstance. And yet it still seems that in the nitty-gritty tough stuff, it's challenging. Can we really live with genuine joy? Now, I'm not talking about a toxic positivity, not a fake and fleeting thing, but a real and lasting joy, something that holds up. It holds up in the rough and tumble of day-to-day life, it's... It holds up to the challenges. You know, we face many challenges. The world culture around us, the flesh, our own sinful desires. There's this tension in our lives. And then the devil and his demons, they seek daily to pour on the gas of the pressure in our lives. The struggles, the situations, the triggers that we have. Can there be a genuine joy that holds up to those things in the hard stuff and the good stuff, the good things that we celebrate, that's real and it's genuine? Well, we can experience genuine joy with God's help. I believe that we can do this with God's help, with the help of others, and when we grow to help ourselves. I really believe God made us, God made us for genuine joy. So let's look at how God can help. Just a few brief thoughts on this today. We don't have time to get into all of it, but how can God help us with this? Well, we do belong to God. That's amazing. He made us, but then he saves us through Jesus, and we belong to him. That's amazing. And even this word rejoice, the Greek word is kario. Okay, we don't say that very often, right? But it literally means favorably disposed to the grace of God. I love that. Favorably disposed to the grace of God. Let that soak in for a moment. We are, you are the apple of God's eye, his delight, his pleasure. He enjoys you. He likes how he made you. He designed you. I think of Psalm 139. He knit you together in your mother's womb. And he's well pleased to offer his son Jesus to you. His favor is on you and for you today. Romans 8. If God is for us, who can be against us? His favor is for you. His favor is on you. And God helps us when we realize this. We can rejoice and we can have genuine joy when we begin to grasp this, that the favor of God is on us. Well, the second way that God can help us is the day of the Lord. And Paul mentions this in the next part of Philippians 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. And listen to this, this last sentence. The Lord is at hand. And that has a multi-nuanced meaning, but part of the reality is that God is here right now. Rejoice. Praise the Lord that he is here with us right now. He is present with us, nearer than we realize. And that phrase, day of the Lord, the Lord is near, also means that Jesus is coming again. No matter what, friends, I cannot guarantee if the Oilers will win the Stanley Cup. 
But I can tell you that Jesus is coming again. And that life, as we know it, the hard things that we go through are just brief and temporary. But Jesus is coming again. And that can give us cause to rejoice. And that doesn't change. That doesn't change. He is coming again and coming again very soon. The next way that God can help us to have genuine joy is to have uh, realized that he's like a watchman of peace in our lives. Philippians 4 verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And I was thinking about this. I had this picture in my mind of this watchman patrolling around us with God's peace. Anything that's coming to get near us, it's there to protect us and envelop us. And in fact, when Paul wrote these words, uh, Philippi had a Roman garrison, a big fortress. And it was like we're in the middle of the fortress of God's peace. He's protecting us with his peace. And so we can rejoice in that. The next way is that God himself is abundant and joyful. That he has glorious riches and he never ends or runs out. Philippians 4 verse 19, And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. So often I come to God and I think of him and I have this insecurity or this scarcity mindset. And it leads to impatience and anxiety. And my picture of God is often negative, like he's angry and he's far off and he's scowling. That's not God. That's not God. He is abundant. He is endlessly joyful. He is a good and happy God. And the word of the Lord says his steadfast love endures forever. That's how much he is from age to age. He is God He never started and will never end. And he's eternal and infinite. And so we can trust him and we can rejoice in that. That he has everything in his strength and power. He's also forever faithful. Another way we can rejoice and have real joy, genuine joy, is that he will see everything to completion. Philippians 1 verse 6. And I'm sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. That's a promise that we can hold on to and treasure. And many times in my life, when I I felt just beside myself, like I felt lost, I felt wandering off, felt like giving up on myself, God used this promise in my own life. No, he is at work. He is at work. It's not only a promise, but it's an action God is right now working, moving, helping, serving, leading, guiding, loving. And so this can give us great hope today. And this is true. This is true. So we can stop and rejoice and praise him now that this is what he's up to in these moments. We can also have genuine joy in God because his presence is with us even in suffering. That we can know the very power of the resurrection of Jesus and his fellowship is with us even in suffering. Philippians 3 verse 7, but whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, garbage, in order that I might gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Jesus Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead." It's probably one of my favorite verses in all of the Bible. And I didn't get to preach it in, my, in our Philippians series. Pastor Rob. <laughs> well, rejoice in the Lord. <laughs> I love Pastor Rob. 
took my passage. For, I'm just kidding. But I can tell you that these verses, the, the, why they're so meaningful to me, because I've battled with loneliness so much in my life. And yet these words, when so often we feel like God leaves us and abandons us, abandons us in hard things, and we feel alone, this comes with power and light and love and presence. It says, no, no, no. I fellowship with you, even in suffering. You can know the power of the resurrected Christ. That word fellowship, that Christ comes closer, nearer and deeper, more profound than words could ever express. That he, in fact, is close and near us. He never leaves us. He never takes off because things are hard. He comes even closer. So if you feel that, if you feel alone, I want you to know that Jesus is present even in suffering, and we can rejoice because of that. And I love this phrase, the surpassing greatness. Friends, anything we face, there's, there's surpassing greatness in our lives because of who Jesus is. Praise the Lord, even in the hardest times. And so these are just a few ways that God can help us. Now let's look at how other people can help us. Are you paying attention and appreciating other people around you? And and Paul actually models this for us in the book of Philippians. In chapter 1, verse 3 to 5, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, all making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Last week, we heard about Epaphroditus. We heard about Timothy. And I think of Paul and his presence and what he has done, that we can rejoice in that. Who's your person? Who are you rejoicing in and celebrating to have genuine joy because of who they are in your life? And on this Father's Day weekend, Pastor Greg talked to me about this and said, uh, we want to acknowledge fathers. And then I had this point about other people. And so I brought this old Bible up here with me. And uh, if I don't grab the front cover, it'll just fall apart. And uh, I just want to say thank you to my dad today, because this is my first Bible. And he gave it to me. uh, It says here in 1989 or something like that. Anyways, we don't have to get into that right now. Yeah, see, it's just falling apart. But I'm so grateful. This thing has been with me ever since he gave it to me. And it's tattered and worn because I've spent hours and hours pouring over it. And it's changed my life. And I rejoice in that today, that my dad did that for me. So who's your person today? And uh, I just want to pause now and just pray for dads. And um, let's take a moment to do that right now. Father God, We thank you for all the dads here today. Thank you for the gift of who they are, the gift of what it is to be a father. I pray that each dad would reflect you, Father God, your love, your wisdom, your grace and strength. Let each dad here enrich the lives of those around them. Thank you for the fathers that we have all had as well. I thank you that we've all been granted life from you through them. We all have a dad, and and some of those are hard and really challenging, God. And so I pray in Jesus' name that you'll have mercy and bring healing. Some are great and encouraging, and and Lord, we celebrate and affirm that. And I pray that you'd even bring to mind right now the good that we can celebrate, maybe that we haven't thought of in a long time. Father, I thank you for the spiritual fathers, uncles, brothers, and sons that we have in Jesus Christ. Thank you that there are so many ways that we can rejoice because of these people. They help us to find genuine joy, and we pray your richest blessing on them today. In Jesus' name, amen. So who's your person? Who's your people? To see the good, both the big and the small, to celebrate it, to rejoice in it, to see how the goodness of God is working in their life. You see, we so often are critical and have critical, a critical spirit, We're fault finders. What if we became joy finders, looking for the good, 
in the lives of others and celebrating that because that can help build a genuine joy in our lives. And my last point here is how can we help ourselves? You see, genuine joy takes risk. We heard Mandy's story. We heard Lisa's story. They stepped out and took risk. I think of the people in this passage, in this book of Philippians, Paul and Timothy and Epaphroditus, the Philippian people. They experienced joy because they risked to go get it. Because having real joy doesn't come from just repressing or holding back or rejecting the tough stuff and the difficult things. And that's what I used to think. But it's actually returning to joy in the middle of the hard things. And Jesus himself wants us to be those kinds of people. And we can actually grow in this skill with the faith of, and help of God and the help of others to then be these kinds of people as we develop this in our lives, to be uh, these kinds of people, to admit that we have triggers, to realize we have emotions and there's hard things in our lives. What happens when things don't go your way? What do you do to cope when you're overwhelmed? Are you seeking God and asking for the help of others and developing a skill to return to joy? To get relational with God, to invite him in, to develop that as a skill in your life. Well, I want you to watch this story from our friend Alan as he shares about uh, seeking God. Let's watch it together now. Have you ever knelt down and asked God, what am, I, what am I doing today? What's next? What should I do? What is your will? This time I knelt down on a Sunday and I just prayed to God and I said, God, what is your will for me t- today or this week? What, what do you want me to do? And I, and I kind of got a, an answer. Of, you need to make some amends to some people that have been in your life. that are sitting on your heart and you just can't get rid of that feeling. And I asked God about this and I said, I'm willing to do that if if you can show me, if you can bring those people forth and guide me to those people, I I will do it. I'm willing to do that no matter what the consequences are. And he did exactly that. So the next day, I usually go on a Monday and I usually go shopping to my astonishment, I got in my vehicle and, and right behind my vehicle, uh, a guy I haven't seen in like 15 years, came behind my vehicle and stared me right in the eyes. And I was just astonished. I was, I didn't know what to believe about this. I was like, Jesus, this is, this is real. And he looked at me and, and, and we came together and started having a conversation. And it's been a long time, and we both look a lot older. I was friends with this man for 10 years, like really good friends. We did everything together. We did business together and watched hockey games, all kinds of stuff with family stuff. And we just had an argument at work, and that was the end of it. And we never spoke for 15 years. We talked and talked about what happened, and and we both made amends. like serious amends. We were both happy with each other and we decided we would, if we'd seen each other again, then we would continue our relationship. So God brought us together to make amends for that. God's timing is definitely perfect. It's, I hope any of you that are watching are willing to do that as well because this gives, I know this gives God great joy. I I had this burden, a spirit of burden, and God lifted that for me and gave me complete joy out of it. The burden lifted, it's just, it just, it leaves you. It, it just leaves you and it's gone. Just like when your sins are forgiven, they, it's gone. It's like it never happened. We can experience genuine joy in this life and so thankful for Alan and and Lisa and Mandy and sharing their stories. We've received many others, and so thank you so much for sending those in. We hope to share more of those in the future. 
But that's the risk that we find in genuine joy. And it's anchored in the bond of Jesus and the love that he gives us, the help uh, we have in belonging to uh, the family of Jesus and developing these joy skills that we can grow in. And today, before you leave, I want to invite you to share some joy with somebody uh, here before you go. Tell them a good thing that happened in your week. Tell them what you're excited about. Get to know somebody new before you leave. And uh, let's be those people of genuine joy today. Let me pray. Father, thank you for your life and love and the hope that we can have in Jesus, that we can truly rejoice because your favor is on us. I pray, Lord, that we would experience that in fresh ways today, but we'd also be transformed by it, God, in greater and greater measures. Thank you for everyone here. I pray your blessing on them now. In Jesus' name, amen.